Hello, I am the Greek Geek because I am Greek and indeed a geek. And I've got a special guest on my channel today, Miles Z, who is a good friend of mine. Hey man, thanks for having me to your channel. Really appreciate it. If you guys don't know me, my name's Miles Z. Thank you for picking me for this uh, review. Thanks for picking out this film for me because I'd never seen Cabin in the Woods. Uh, I always assumed it was like the stereotypical cabin horror movie and... Yeah, no, completely surprised by this film. Just a warning for this video that we will be discussing spoilers throughout the video. In an underground facility, a group of scientists, I'm going to say, are watching a group of college kids take a trip to a cabin in the woods. Uh, the scientists in the facility manipulate what happens in the cabin so that the college students are slowly killed off one by one and are sacrificed by these monsters that are set loose on them and are sacrificed to the and are sacrificed to the old gods. Yes, that does sound like a very weird plot. You have a pretty big cast of characters and actors in this movie. Not a lot of them very well known with the exception of one like Chris Hemsworth. Uh, one of my favourite uh, actors within the MCU. So yeah, in this film, if you're interested, it's got Chris Hemsworth, as Miles E said, Kristen Connolly, Anna Hutchinson, Fran Kranz, I think I'm saying that right, Jesse William, Richard Jenkins, Bradley Whitford, and Sigourney Weaver at the end. Also having Sigourney Weaver in the film, I'm a massive fan of her and Alien and even Avatar. You know, a lot of people don't like Avatar. I loved Avatar. I particularly loved her performance in Avatar. And then there's Ghostbusters as well. Another one of my favourite movies of all time. So to have Sigourney Weaver pop up at the end, that was incredible. And actually the first time I recognised her voice uh, early on in the movie. And I didn't recognise who it was. It was, just, it was eating away. And when you see her appear at the end of the film, it's like... Holy shit. Like, I didn't even recognise her voice in the movie, so good job, dude, on <laughs> recognising her voice. You must really be a really big fan. I did have a bit of a problem with Chris Hemsworth's accent towards the start of the film. For those of you that don't know, for some reason, he is Australian and does have an Australian accent. But I didn't feel he really did a really good job with his American accent towards the start, and it kind of took me out of the film a little bit. I do realise that trying to change accents and do that consistently and act at the same time is really hard. So I'm not I'm not saying it's that bad. I'm just saying it just took me out of the film a little bit. And the dialogue you can tell is really 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 well crafted because of Joss Whedon as a writer. He's a fantastic writer. You know, fantastic writer and this is more credibility to him because his writing here is so good. So as I just said, it is written by Joss Whedon, which is a great thing and is directed by Drew Goddard. And it's also written by him too, so you can't give Joss Whedon all the credit for the writing. Joss Whedon has always been really good at writing believable and likeable characters and just making you care about them. So you probably know like some of his work, like he's written and directed Firefly, Serenity, The Avengers, and also episodes on TV shows such as Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel. This movie has two, two tones, it has comedy and horror. Throughout this movie, it does an excellent job of <laughs> having comedy and horror and just mashing the two together and it works. Even though they're two completely conflicting tones, it really works for this movie. One example is one, when one of the characters, Dana, is getting thrown around by a zombie and looks like she is about to die. She's on a security monitor in the science facility in the background and all the scientists and workers in that are celebrating a job well done and there's music going, they're drinking, they're talking, they're partying, they're having a good time and just in the background there's just this girl getting thrown around by a zombie and is about to get killed and it is hilarious there's plenty of scenes like that throughout the movie but what i love the most is that it's, this film is just one big metaphor uh the angry gods are us the people in the science lab are the the, the movie makers you know uh, the, i think the lead is even called the the director so it's one big metaphor that whole line where they're saying remember the time when we could just throw a woman in a volcano and people would be pleased with that the god, the angry gods want more, and that's that's us. We're not pleased with simple plots anymore. Ah, uh, yeah, totally. I, I I totally picked up on that too. Good job, man. What I liked about the horror elements is that it played with your expectations a lot. For example, that scene with the wolf head and that chick is about to kiss it, 
every fiber of your body is screaming that something is going to happen in that moment. Like the wolf's, wolf's head is going to come to life and bite her face off or anything, but then nothing happens at the end of it. It just completely plays with your expectations. So in the first half hour to 40 minutes, there's not too much action going on in the movie. Not until the zombie hillbillies, yes, zombie hillbillies, are set loose upon the college students in the cabin. And from there, it's just action, 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 and lots of fun. And then at the end, there's a large chunk of the movie dedicated to when the last two survivors get to the facility and they unleash all the monsters that they have captive under there. And it's just complete mayhem. It's, it's that's the, At that point, it gets even more violent and over the top with all the monsters running around and just killing all the staff and scientists that are in that facility, and I love it. Even a guy gets impaled by a unicorn. <laughs> I do think there are some moments where there is some dodgy CGI going on, especially with like the monsters and things. Whether that's done intentionally or not, I have no clue. So yeah, as Mozzie said, the CGI is not that great, especially when the monsters are set loose. I don't think this is intentional, it's just they probably didn't put that much into the CGI budget. Although the practical effects for a lot of the monsters are really good. So prose, great comedy and horror. Great characters that you care about. Great dialogue. Great writing and directing. It also has a very fun and different premise, which is interesting. And that third act, <laughs> so much fun. CGI is a bit bad in some places. For me, it's not a big con, but if you're someone who really cares about the CGI in a movie, it will probably bother you. And Chris Hemsworth's accent in this movie Takes you out of it a bit. Again, not really that bad a thing. I'm, I, I was really just trying to find things to nitpick that I didn't like about this movie and I could barely find any because I love this movie so much. So I really highly recommend that you go and see this movie. I'll let Miles E give his rating. I actually watched this film on Netflix as well. Um, so you guys should definitely go check it out. My personal score for Cabin in the Woods is four stars. I think I'm going to go watch it again because I really, really enjoyed it. So guys... Make sure you check out this film. If you're a fan of horror or comedy or if they're just mashed in together, you'll love this movie. As Miles Z said, this movie is on Netflix, so if you have Netflix, go check it out right now. Miles Z, thank you for helping me review this movie on my channel. Guys and girls, if you haven't already, go and check out Miles Z's channel. He's been doing this about the same amount of time that I have, just over a year, and he has reviewed a lot more movies than I have. He has over 300 videos at this point now. So he's bound to have something that you're going to enjoy. So I really highly recommend that you go check out his channel. Also, just letting you know as well, we've also done another collaboration a bit earlier this week on A Nightmare on Elm Street. I'll leave a link for that in the description as well if you want to go check that out on Miles E's channel. Thanks again, buddy. I really appreciate it again. As always, thank you very much for watching, everyone, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. You can find me on social media. There's links to my videos down below. As always, thank you for watching.